Thanks for tuning in. So happy to be here. Another episode where I'll be reviewing the the latest episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm that I'm on. Obviously, the season ended a little bit ago. I'm on episode seven, and I'm so excited for our guest today. Are you ready? John Ranitsky. <clears throat> Excuse me. John Ranitsky. I had a little scratch in my throat. He plays Asa Young Larry. He is here today. Well, he's on Zoom today with me to talk about his time on on Curb Your Enthusiasm. And he gives so many fun behind the scenes tidbits. I was laughing uh, throughout this entire interview that I do with him. In my opinion, John Ranitsky is like one of the funniest comedians out there today. And I've had the privilege of knowing him since I was 18, we did Groundlings together. And even then he he was like, he was a superstar. He was so funny, so funny. It was like not a surprise to me when his career blew up and he's he's been in everything. He's been on SNL and, and done huge movies and TV shows and is always touring, doing standup. So if you don't know John Ranitsky, I'm so excited to introduce you to him, but I'm sure you already know who he is. He is brilliant, and this was so fun to to relive our time on a curb doing this episode. So, oh my gosh. Oh, here we go. Also, I'm so sorry if you're watching this and not listening to this. I did it again. I didn't do like... I didn't do it so like you could see me talking. You just see John talking, which is great. I just I want you to know I'm aware of that. And I'm sorry if you're like, how come we're not seeing both of you? I messed something up. Before we get into the interview, uh, just a little housework. I'll be in Miami February 25th and 26th. Had to make sure that was right. Uh, I'll be opening for Christina P there. And then on the 27th, I'm doing a a show there too, but I don't know the location. So that weekend I'll be in, I'll be in Miami and I will be posting all that on my Instagram, or you can check out chaseodonnell.com. Other than that, I kind of just want to jump into the episode. All right, here we go. Okay, John Rudnitsky. What a hello. Pleasure. Hello. What a treat, Chase. What, what a pleasure. Great to see you. So good to see you. Thank you for um for chatting about of uh, curb your enthusiasm. Yeah, I'm happy to do it. It's uh, the coolest, and and you were you were the best during that. Oh uh, well, um it was such a treat to find out that you were playing Asa Young Larry um, because because I've I've known you um, since the days of Groundlings over 10 years over 10 years I've gotten to follow your career and been like I know him it's oh my god we had a lot of fun back then in Groundlings that was like my favorite class me too we did two we did two classes in Groundlings together i don't think i like the second one as a way who was it was we like we liked heather morgan right right didn't we we loved heather we loved heather um and the it's the it was so long ago i don't even like remember i know i just remember i just remember really enjoying it and i was very excited when you were on set of curb because i was geeking out and i felt like you were the person i could go to to kind of vent and talk it out with and did I do okay and I got some vids of you you got Um, vids of me on the monitor that mm -hmm. made my life because you caught Larry breaking at something I said which 
is, you know, probably the greatest moment of my whole life. And, yep. Uh, um, and you would, so playing young Larry, like, first of all, before we even get into that, like, what was yeah, it yeah. like when you got the call that you were playing young Larry? I was freaking, I was so excited. Well, so I was on curb four years ago, That's right. but I, but I got cut. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So I got cut from something. Um, and Larry, and that was like thrilling. And Larry called me to tell me I got cut, which is like an unbelievable thing. It's not like we have each other's numbers. We're not talking or anything. Oh, Larry called you. Larry called me. That's huge. You know, I I was in this season and I too got cut and I got a call from Jeff, the director. Really? But not a call from Larry. I mean, that's even bigger. It's a big deal. Well, I think there was... I mean, I had known Larry a little from SNL because he was Bernie. Oh, um, right, right. I was there and he was always really nice to me. Um, and he's always been my hero, truly. Yeah. Uh, not just saying that because I'm on the pod. <laughs> Larry's Larry's the GOAT, obviously. True. And it was like my second or third week of work at SNL, I'm the new guy. And I'm walking down the hall and I feel a pat on my shoulder. And I look up and it's freaking Larry David. And he goes, hey, John, how you doing? You know, and he knows my name, which like freaked me out. And I was like, Larry, hey, we're, we're making this a regular thing. And he goes, eh, let's not get carried away. Because you had known him from Curb. Did you do no, Curb? Because I had seen him like, you know, he'd come a few times as Bernie, you know. Oh, whatever. OK, OK. Like, we're making a regular thing. And he goes, oh, let's <laughs> not get carried away. And he just walked off. I was like, that was kind of perfect. But he was always very nice to me um, from then on. And then I'd gotten fired from SNL and he had gotten fired from SNL. And when I auditioned for Curb, that had just happened. And even like, I remember like I auditioned uh, for in front of Larry and, and Jeff Garland. Um, I don't know if she, I don't think Schaefer was there. Um, but uh, I was even nervous then. And they were so nice to me. And, 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 and Garland ran up to me after that audition and was like, I have gotten fired all, you know, from a million things. Don't worry about it. And, oh, um, that's and so then, nice. And then um, Larry, I think so. I think there was an understanding because Larry had been fired from SNL too. And maybe it, he knew it was a sensitive time or maybe he was just being whatever, for whatever reason. No, maybe and, you were very talented. For whatever reason, yeah. that, that could be too. <laughs> that could be true. I don't know. Um but it worked out. So he called me, go, you know, I get a call, Larry David calling for you. And I just, I knew, I knew I'd probably gotten caught. I'm like, he's not calling to be like, just so you know, this is the best episode of Curve ever, the best scene. Cause I was in one scene. I want to scene. make this recurring. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I did not, I, I knew that wasn't the case. And he's like, I had to cut you, but we'll have you back. And then like four years went by and I was like, I must've done a really shit job. And that's what happened. And that's why I haven't had, you know, gotten anything. And then, uh, and then young Larry comes along and I still have to tape for Larry. I still had to like send in a thing for yeah. it. Um, but when I did get it, yeah, I was so elated. Um, it was heavy on my mind, but you know, from when I got cut to that, that moment too, of like, I need to get on that show yeah. and that would be the role that I would want. There's like nothing in Curve history that I would rather play than young Larry. Exactly. It's so and, almost a blessing you got cut four years ago. It's a blessing. And and and, and LD told me that on set too. He's like, oh, yeah, this part. He goes, in this your... cannot get cut. Because, you know, this so. one's not getting cut. It's the whole episode. Um, he said, this one cannot get cut. So that was nice. Did you, for yeah. your audition, what scene did you send in? Was it like the glasses, the mugs? It was the mug. It was just the mug. It was the, the mug. mug and and into the- I figured the, that, um, was a, one, that was a strong character scene, you know, really strong character scene. Character. Well, the mug into the affair. And you know, you just get this blur. Oh, yeah, of, the affair. I'm excited to talk about this episode. <laughs> yeah. So you, you, you just get the uh, a blurb, obviously, of what the scene's about. I know you know this about, you know, just you argue with Larry about the mugs. You think he was a big coffee drinker. He disagrees. Uh -huh. um, and then there you had 
an affair. You know, you went through an ordeal when you were young and it goes through that whole thing. And he doesn't think it was that traumatic of an experience for you or whatever. Um, <laughs> and, you know, it's all improvised, but I did write out a scene because okay. I've been watching the show for since I was a kid. And I was like, I think I... No, it was kind of the most fun audition ever because it was like Curb Mad Libs. And I wasn't auditioning with Larry for this. It was a, a tape. It was a tape. So I wrote, like, I had my buddy play Larry. And oh, I oh you had someone out. to play. Okay. And so I had some stuff in there that I ended up doing on the show, too. But um, Well, like, little fun fact, and this is, this is what uh, the listeners really get to hear the behind the scenes here you kind of did that with your scenes when it was your turn you because the show's improvised to prepare you kind of wrote out stuff to help you with the improv yeah well. which larry does not want because he doesn't want you thinking about it and i get that and i did make that mistake the first time i did the show i didn't have as many ideas but also you're st you have if you have a joke in your head then you're not listening to what he's saying and you're trying to get it to land there. Classic improv rules. Classic improv rules. They want you to and listen. That's why he doesn't okay. want you to listen. He wants you to listen. Yeah, um, he wants you to listen. But so I just came in with a lot of ideas of where I thought it could go. And if it goes in that direction, then you know what to do. Like, these are a bunch of things I could potentially say and then try to throw that out a bit so it could feel organic. And, um, but, yeah, and I would come over to you and like run everything by you. And yeah, yeah, and I'd, you I'd, would secretly print I'd them secretly out. Secretly print it out for you. <laughs> yeah, 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 which was super helpful. Um, but a, a, you know, uh, some of the shit they did in there, which is really cool. And... Is this the? Have you ever done any other? I mean, obviously, with your groundlings background, you have a lot of improv training. But have you ever done another show that's like filmed improv? Um, no. No, this is there's I don't think there's anything like Herb in that way. Um, yeah, that's like fully improvised like that. It's crazy. It's crazy. I, I love it. I kind of prefer it. And those takes would go on forever. And I didn't want that to end that ripping with Larry. I mean, at first I was super nervous, but once he broke, then I once felt he like laughed cracked. and you felt like okay, I'm in the right direction. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. everyone, I mean, I told you this too when you were doing it, but like Video Village was like laughing the whole time every time you would improv with him. So oh, it was so going cool. great. Um, so, so cool. Shall, so we into, <laughs> shall we jump yeah. into? Shall we jump into episode seven? Okay, great. Okay, so um, the episode starts with you're at the campaign. The campaign for a mayor. Yeah. And you're you're an actor, artist slash very political in this episode. You love politics. very po uh, just a full blown douche. <laughs> uh, and Larry wants to get your attention. An so activist and an artist. And an activist two, and artist. And, and honestly, the, are the two ever mutually exclusive? Really, you know, it's yeah. <laughs> you do call yourself an artist a lot in this episode, which made me laugh every single time. Um, Irma <laughs> or Tracy Ullman does not want to tap you to get Larry's attention, and um, or to get your attention for Larry. Do you feel like if you were in that situation and someone asked you to tap someone for them, would you? I would tap. I would do the tap. I would tap. I would tap as well. I'm always <laughs> seeing things from LD's perspective. I'm always like, yeah, that's <laughs> that's how I would feel. Just go ahead and tap. Yeah. I think Tracy. Also, by the way, that was the coolest scene to shoot, right? Oh, I mean, tell me. With Richard Lewis. Go on. Richard Lewis is there. Tracy Ullman's there. These are legends. And I just have to sit there. And actually, that was like kind of one of the hardest scenes because I didn't have to do anything but not laugh. And just listening to them was oh, Tracy had Larry laugh for five minutes straight, I think. I, I think she, yeah, she would have <laughs> everyone <laughs> laughing so she hard. Really, oh, you can She's talk brilliant. And talking and talking yeah. and talking. That's a perfect impression. Um, so I know I noticed like in that first shot, you would assume you were just an extra in the scene. Like that's. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah, yeah. You just uh, were viewing the. Just the, viewing the thing. And 
yeah, yeah. There's yeah. a fun scene actually, because there's no pressure on you, and you get to no just like, be in hair and makeup. I and did, I did, I did this a few times. So. Yeah, you no. had some good like. I was, I was a hammy. <laughs> I, I hammed it up as an extra for sure. You've I'm done like, some extra work in the past. It showed. Um, let me tell you. Okay, good. Um, good. <laughs> but also just to be with Richard Lewis too, and he wasn't in much of the season. That was it. That was all he was in, pretty much. Yeah, and so that was like a special day. I feel like. And watching Larry and Richard improv in that first scene, where Larry's like, "Will you just die already?" But like yeah. laughs about it. But like I was watching it, like these really are just two friends. They're not even acting right now. They're just they're, they're just, just happy to see each other. Yeah. And it it was killing. It was absolutely <laughs> killing. Uh, um, Richard's we were, so nice too. I know he the he was like not doing well either, and it was so cool yeah. that he got to come back for just. I know. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that special was, scene. Special scene. Then I go up to Larry. Let me tell you something. Non pros, there's nothing they love more than when actors tell them what they think. <laughs> Did you come? Where'd you get no, that line? Schaefer, <laughs> Schaefer told me to say that. That is a brilliant line. That's and an Larry insane goes. line. Yeah, that was not. Schaefer <laughs> came over the walkie and told me to say that line, and I and I was cracking up. I was like, okay, that's, that's an insane. That's a, thing. That's kind of like we learn your character. I was saying a thing about that led into that. You know, just talking about like you know. Yeah, when when you, when you win an award, I was basically saying, yeah, that that you know people love to hear about what you think about the world, and people want to hear about you know something important, right? <laughs> That's why people watch the Academy Awards or whatever. Yeah, I forget what That's I was going. So about. true. That's why that people watch so the SAG Awards or something. <laughs> um, and Schaefer was kind of you know tight. And then he's like, that "This way. is how we're gonna say it." Um, no, all right, let's jump ahead. Pro to Just the describing anybody who's not an actor as a non-pro non <laughs> just like regular people a non -pro. Uh, yeah. man this show's pretty funny gotta say yeah pr pretty funny um okay so then you you go to the the read through at um at the on the stage this is Another really cool day I'm sitting with Ted Danson. I'm listening. To chat with him about his career and his life. Isn't Amazing. he just a gem? What a gem of a human. Wouldn't that be a bummer if he was a dick? It would have, yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. glad we can say good things. He's such a bummer. <laughs> I, yeah, probably, no, I probably wouldn't have asked you what you thought of him if if yeah, I knew. Was. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, <laughs> and Maria Sophia. This um, scene with Maria Sophia, when she does, um, I've seen the apartment and it's really nice, and I'm sure I'll be spending a lot of time there, so you can see why. <laughs> this is a toughie. She goes, "This is a toughie." Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just, I just, anytime Maria Sophia is on camera, it's just too much. She's <laughs> unbelievable. Next level. Next, Next level. level. It's nearly impossible to like act bad. bad. Well. Exactly. I know. You know, like, yeah. That is such a fine line to walk. And <laughs> I feel like she's like the all star of I the know. season. I mean, it's incredible. Oh my God! Um, Tracy kills it too. Oh, Jesus Tracy! Christ. What a what an episode! I mean, okay, so okay, so table read. Yeah. Okay, so table read. Great. Then um, we're gonna go to you with the mugs. You don't like the mugs. <laughs> yeah, I don't like the mugs. Yeah, this was the audition scene as well, and Larry and I are just our button heads on it. This is the first thing I shot too. So I was like very excited that day, very nervous to coming over to you a lot. Yeah, yeah. This was the this was a big scene. So far you got to be a background actor and like in a table read. Um Yeah, 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 yeah. This my favorite line with with this scene with Larry is when you say, Would you mind calling me Larry? Yeah. <laughs> I was really happy that that made it in. 
Because then that became a runner throughout the episode too. Larry, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Call me Larry. Um, so okay, you're Larry. okay, Larry. All, Larry. Right, Larry. All right, Larry. You're very yeah. adamant that like you've been studying Larry and you know mm -hmm. what Larry would drink out of. I and think I know Larry better than anyone knows Larry. Yeah. That I, I was saying, yeah, yeah. I've done a lot of work on Larry and a lot. And of and, and Larry's Larry. just like. Okay. Yeah, I think you're too close to Larry in some way. You know, it's hard for you to zoom out and really see. This happens you know, again with the glasses. With the glasses. Yeah. Glasses. I'll tell you what. Put this in the maybe. That's it. They're the ones that in the maybe. In the maybe plan. He's amazing. He's amazing. He's, He's amazing. so good. And we had like, he had some amazing improv during that. We went on for a while about the maybes versus the maybe nots and like what makes a maybe versus a maybe not. <laughs> and, um, and, but he had this amazing thing where he goes, you know, I lived in a, I lived in a small village. We had one pair of glasses <laughs> for the whole village, you know, and he goes, we couldn't see more than three feet in front of us, but we were happy, you know, and <laughs> It didn't make it, but and then I got teary eyed. I was like, no, that's that's the passion. That's the kind of fire I, I want to see I when picking the glasses. And <laughs> I was like, you know what? You put these in the maybes. I remember that ending punchline being decided. Like, put them in the maybes, and it was so yeah. funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, that didn't make it in him being like we had one pair of glasses in the whole no, time. No, no. <laughs> There's so much shit. I mean, yeah, and with the glasses with Larry, there was like I had backstory of talking about um, you know, that you know, Larry would sit too close to the TV growing up and he <laughs> had a cataract, whatever I said, you know, and and he goes, But I didn't, I didn't, you know, and I'm and then Schaefer goes, shush Larry every time he, you know wants to correct you so i'm saying you know larry when he grew up he grew up very poor he goes but hey, yeah go sh -sh 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 -sh. <laughs> and uh and we couldn't get through it like me shushing larry like we could not get through it oh my god i wish they did like um just outtakes things that didn't would, make it oh in. oh my god me too I and mean, there's so yeah, much that episode. so yeah. much yeah and not only like having larry call me larry but also like doing larry to larry it would be like, I'd be like, okay. You know, we were like, okay to each other. Okay. Uh, okay. That's such a good impression. My favorite part of your character, um, or not, uh, not my favorite, one of one of my, my favorites, favorite. is that you were sexually assaulted by a supermodel. And yeah, yeah, you yeah. felt like that was yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. a really tough thing to come back from. That was a hard thing to come back from. And yeah, I, I was like, I, I, came like of, I came in with a bunch of nicknames. I can't remember any of them. I right remember now. this. I was like, that oh was like one gosh. of the things that I had in my back of like nicknames that I would have had. High they school. called me this. They, they oh, called I me remember this. you had. I, I can't been. remember. It was like uh, Cry Baby Cougar Down or whatever they did. And <gasps> you don't know what it was like. Like everyone would just like high five me. And, <laughs> everyone wanted to be my friend but I didn't want that you know like I just wanted to be a regular kid and like I, I, I just want to go to prom I didn't want to be at, at you know a Cannes Film Festival on on a yacht getting a hand job that I wasn't you know prepared to receive you know I just wanted to be a regular guy you know a boy's virginity is a sacred thing I kept saying a boy's virginity is a sacred thing Larry and and you know oh all this yeah. stuff there was like i we had there was so much stuff i feel like about her and i'd give all the money back i'd give all the money <laughs> back if i could just be a virgin again uh there was like so much great I stuff from that all this. and it is so sad it gets cut down to just like the points that they need to move the episode forward right and like it ends with larry being like if that how you're like how would you feel if you got if this happened to you and you'd be like my high school would be named after me my high school would be named after me yeah, yeah. which yeah. <laughs> man i i, it's an incredible I really life. want outtakes but i'm so excited we're getting to hear hear what you said again because i had forgotten all these brilliant yeah. lines yeah 
Um, They're so good. So the the B story of this episode is Larry decides to go campaigning with Tracy Ullman to maybe or to earn with Irma to have her change some laws for him. Yes. Um, and, you know, some fun little quips like, Larry, you can't ask to use their bathroom. She's like, you don't pee when you're when you're campaigning. OK, um, yeah. they stumble into a book club with Susan. You don't pee when you're campaigning. Is that a line? <laughs> Yeah. She's like, you can't be, you don't pee when you're campaigning. <laughs> Cause he wanted to ask someone a random uh, house. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And then another line that I enjoy is they like run into the book club with um, Susie and Cheryl and, and Irma goes, I don't need a club to read books, which I think is just very telling of her character as well. She plays such a good, <laughs> like, repugnant is the word like larry uses the word repugnant and she's just so I'm terrible repugnant. yeah enjoy your book club i don't need those to read books but yeah she's just uh yeah she's the, she's the worst she's, she's the, worst. the worst but so good so good um and at the know. end of the episode Oh, another another B line is like the widow, um, the widow of Saul Berman keeps getting like Larry's golf appointments and Larry's lobster. And we find out she's not even the widow. They had divorced 10 years ago. Right. Oh, that's in this episode, too. That's, that's in this episode. What what do you think about that? Would you be upset if the ex was getting all the like widow Benefits. Yeah, same thing. Yeah, I'm with uh, Larry with all the Larry. way. I mean, you practically are Larry. You know Larry better than himself. I know Larry better than anybody. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> listen, I'm on the same page. Um, okay. So, end end of the episode. We're getting there. You're at the camp. You're at the voting day, and you um, notice that Larry leaves. Yes. Notice that Larry. Oh yeah, we're voting. Notice that uh, they're like, oh, Larry, you got your, you changed your mind yeah. about pigs. Yeah, he taunts me. He taunts me about the thing, and he goes, you know, oh, he's he's defending the prop master, and he's, you know, he's <laughs> like, you're driving this guy fucking crazy. And you gotta, <laughs> yes. You know. um, and then you see him leave. Yeah, he also shows the the photo to an 18 year old kid, which is like hilarious. Wait, what uh, photo? Of the Italian actress. He's like, oh, you know, you sleep with this woman, and this woman wanted to sleep with you. That that all fits great. Um, then I see him throw away the pen. I'm I'm appalled. Yeah, because uh, you're an artist and activist. Let me tell you. Yeah, and you you know mm -hmm. the two are you know equally as important. And uh, we find out that by Larry leaving, well you guys lose by one point and you uh, make lose by one vote yeah make, oh vote that's right it doesn't yeah. go by points <laughs> and you decide to uh tell everyone it was larry and he's the reason that they didn't win yeah i, I expose him and i remember like the first time i came out i like did it kind of you know a little more grounded maybe and Trafer was like, no, you need to fucking yell. And I just like, then at that point I came in. All right, oh. let's see. I'm going to, I'm going to play just an excerpt. Lovely people. I love that you keep saying that. Just lovely people. Just lovely people. Wait, so I, I'm confused. Did you get fired as young Larry in this episode? I think I... I think I must have quit because why would I work for you? Such a, yeah, so such a guy who is so against everything I stand for. Yeah. Artistry and activism. <laughs> okay, so you know, he's such done. a disappointment. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, he's been shaming you for like coming out as being assaulted and like, <laughs> you know what I mean? I want to work <laughs> with really, it. I'm really at the last straw here with him. Yeah. Oh yeah. my god, your character just seems like the worst. The worst. The I mean, worst. I know the, I know I know so many people like that. I, mean, I think we probably both do. Yeah, yeah. Like it must have been so fun to play that type of actor. So fun. Ah. Uh, 
Dream role. <laughs> um, role. I'd love to play a douchey actor, but to play young Larry also. Oh, on my God. Role. That's it. That's so it. fun. That was such a funny episode and yeah it's all yeah just an ep- as an episode as a whole too just to be a part of that it's like yeah that's a pretty yeah that's a golden episode right there well <laughs> oh my time. god thank you thank you for giving me so many inside um you know tidbits while we reviewed of course, that. you were there you were there for a lot of it but uh i'm just reminding you for years I- for your scenes in particular, I was there more than others because I wanted to see you Four and months. like record you and everything. Whereas like a lot of other scenes that I've been watching, it's like m- much more of a surprise, but I had forgotten all your fun improv stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, thank um, you for uh, keeping me calm on set and also being giddy with me. And oh my God. Gokes with me oh and God. taking photos of the monitor and... <laughs> all that stuff that's what i'm there for um yeah. can you before before we head out i would love you to plug yeah. everything and anything um oh you're on leap on nbc i the i just big, want you to just the, is that what it's called leap. the big leap, the big leap. Okay. it's now on hulu oh it was on fox now it's on Hulu. okay i got it all um, wrong just because, leap well, on nbc is a completely different show yeah, and you should watch that too if you can. Okay, okay. Um, watch all the leaps. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's that. Um, and then some stuff I'm shooting right now. Stand up. I'm just always doing stand up around. Yeah, when are your next shows that people can come out? I mean, I'm always in LA. Um, I'm, well, I'm uh, currently in New York, but usually in LA doing shows. <laughs> I got the, the first weekend in March, I'll be at Zany's in Chicago. Okay. So there's that. And can uh, they find this all on your Instagram or is there a website to go to? Instagram, I'll share all of my Instagram. Okay. You'll, you'll just show it right down there or something. I'm going to do a little link to your Instagram so oh, everyone can great. So follow can and find you. That out. And we got to get LD to watch this, you know? Yeah, you know, um, I'm sure I can. I'm sure we can make that happen. I'll I'll send it to his assistant. By the way, um, my, I grew up watching this show. It's like my family show. And I was home. I'm in Jersey now. I was home for the for with this episode. All my friends came over. My mom had a candy truck outside uh, for us. We had like a premiere of like for like seven guys. Wait, wait, uh, for your episode? Just for this episode. Oh my like God, that's little... so fun. It was, so... my mom surprised me with a candy truck for grownups. Uh, oh, she was like, we're going to have a so premiere. Uh, we're so excited. Did you do uh, that when you were like in, oh, what's the movie Home Again with Reese Witherspoon? When I was in a home, my mom rented out a movie theater. And... Okay, okay. <laughs> And everybody that I grew up with came to that too. Oh, like wait, I saw that. your Instagram post about that where someone was oh, like, yeah. I didn't know this was John's family and friends. And I just showed up. That's pretty <laughs> yeah, funny. That article friggin' came out like two weeks ago or like a month ago. <laughs> You're and like, this wait. incident happened seven years ago. I was like, this is crazy. I would have thought I that wow. wouldn't have come up again. But <laughs> be careful what you do, I guess. Man, and you'll um, understand what we're talking about when you check out my Instagram. Exactly. Like Got to check check out below. Smash that like button. Smash it. Like, subscribe. But um, thank you so much. I don't want to take up any more of your time. Um, you're the best. I'm. You're the best. Thank you, Chase. So excited that we got to work on this together. Me too. Me too. And fun to recap. Fun to recap. Bye. Well, that was that was so fun. Thank you again to John. Um, Yeah, all of his info is going to be in the show notes below. Uh, Cool. I just wanted to pick a card because, you know, I like to do that. So, um, okay. This one says, share your gifts. You, your creativity positively impacts the world. It's ripe with beauty and innovation. Everyone benefits from your art, especially you. Get to know your talented inner muse. Nurture your vision. Your unique gifts are meant to be shared. 
Beautiful. I agree. Um, I agree with that statement. Here are a few things that I was enthusiastic about this week. It was obviously the Super Bowl, okay? I think about 75,000 people were there in person and a hundred million were like watching. No, I might be wrong. It might be in the billions. Is that too much? I don't know the statistics. There were lots of people watching around the world. <laughs> you know, it's just a fun event. Like, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a football fan but I enjoy the tradition of watching the Super Bowl. So that was something I, I had fun with. Loved the halftime show. Now let me, let me tell you about the halftime show. I've been disappointed with the Super Bowl halftime shows for a while now. They just haven't, they haven't showcased the talent in our country. Um, the way America's got talent. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It just doesn't like, I don't know, Maroon 5, that was a joke. Justin Timberlake's wasn't great. The Weeknd, like good songs, but like, where was the performance? I I didn't get it. Uh, this one, okay, JLo and, and Shakira were fire. But this one, it felt like a show. Like it felt like finally we're getting the halftime show we deserve. So am I going to go ahead and say it was the best one ever? No, but I'm going to say it's up there. I think when Prince performed, I wasn't there for it. I wasn't even, I wasn't alive for that one, but I, I hear it was just phenomenal. You know, it's up there though. I was, I was, I literally, I made a speech before the halftime show because I watched with like my dad and uncle and aunts and cousins. And I was just like, all right, everyone, like it's time for the halftime show. Everybody pipe down. Like there cannot be any talking. This is my Super Bowl. So a lot of people left the room to make sure that I had a good viewing experience. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then I'm, you know, I'm from LA. So having the Rams win, like that's pretty cool. I can't even imagine what it was like being in the stadium in LA, having LA win. Uh, it just seems like pretty cool, pretty cool experience. So the Super Bowl was fun, but the Olympics, they have ba barely anyone's been watching and viewership is down like 48%. And I, I gotta say, I think it's because in the 90s, early 2000s, like everybody had cable. Well, not everybody, everyone, but like, you know, most people could like just sit down and turn on their TV and it's on. Now I think a lot of, at least the younger generations don't have regular TV. We have Apple TV or whatever, where it's, we just have Netflix and Hulu and it makes it a lot harder to just sit down and enjoy the Olympics. So I think they have to change something moving forward because it did not feel the same. Like I used to always watch the opening ceremonies and closing ceremonies and like all the ice skating events. By the way, I've seen clips, okay? Nathan Chen, out of this world, out of control. His Elton John performance, do yourself a favor, check that one out. And then this Russian girl, I mean, she's phenomenal. And what a scandal. She got, she got like, she got tested positive for having doping like drugs in her. I don't know if that's how you, what you say, how you call it, but, um, such a scandal, <sighs> but like, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't, you shouldn't take performance enhancing drugs to improve your ice skating because that's not fair so i'm kind of at a loss with that one last thing i went down to san diego and it was a lot of fun i enjoyed hiking and the beach it's been really hot in la not to like brag <laughs> i know it's pretty cold other places um but i actually prefer the cold i'm like tired of the heat like let's let's get some rain going but it was a nice, I had a nice little beach day in February, which was like, what is going on? So those were the things that brought me joy. And what what brought you joy? Please let me know, uh, either in the comments below or, uh, 
or just slide me a DM. I'm also on Cameo and it's been a lot of fun. I've been getting requests to like do dances, like they'll send me a dance and I'll copy it. Um, that's a That's been fun. Uh, my Cameo, I don't know, you just search Chase O'Donnell if you ever want a personalized dance, okay? Thank you so much for tuning into this episode. Thank you again so much to John Ranitsky. That was so cool to to relive this episode with him. And um, I hope I hope you have a wonderful day, a wonderful week. And do me a favor and just do one thing this week that brings you joy. All right, that you're you're excited about. Okay, bye. That's it. Take it away. That's it. Bum bum bum